Hello! There are a lot of really exciting new features in the latest Home Assistant 2022.4 release. Let's see what's new and what has changed. And as usual, I'll not just talk about these changes, I'll also try to demonstrate them to you. Before we begin, at any point, let me know in the comments which of the next new Home Assistant 2022.4 features is the most useful and exciting for you. And I will share mine later in the video. Now, let's start. The first change in Home Assistant 2022.4 is renaming Lovelace to Dashboards. Finally, the term Lovelace is somehow confusing for a lot of people, including me. But what actually it is? Lovelace UI was introduced in the beginning of year 2019. Before Lovelace, the look and feel of the Home Assistant was stored in the configuration.yaml file. And to change something in the view, for example, you had to add some YAML code and to restart every time. Now everything can be done from the UI and this UI is now called Dashboards instead of Lovelace. So. Hello dashboards and goodbye Lovelace. Much appreciated change and I'll try to never use Lovelace again in my videos. Next change in Home Assistant 2022.4 is possibility to hide entities. Until now you had the option to enable or disable entities. If you disable an entity it disappears from everywhere including the history and the logbook. But what if you don't want to see an entity and at the same time to have the option to check the history? Here comes the entity hiding feature. When you hide an entity, it will no longer be shown on auto-generated dashboards and it will be automatically hidden from HomeKit, Amazon Echo and Google Assistant. And they will not be called when a service call is targeting the area they're in. Going forward, until now, groups were only available for YAML configuration. But after Home Assistant 2022.4 release, you can manage groups right from the user interface. A group is a collection of devices or entities and they can be very useful because they let you control and monitor multiple things as single entity. For example, using groups, you can consolidate the light bulbs so you can control them all with one switch. On top, you can hide the members of the group so your dashboards will not be cluttered. Possible for grouping are multiple binary sensors, covers, fans, lights, media players, locks and switches. Next new thing in Home Assistant 2022.4 is the Switch SX integration. SwitchSX lets you transform any switch into something different. For example, light, cover, fan, and more. Imagine that you have a smart plug, which normally in Home Assistant is represented as switch. But on this smart plug, you have connected a desk light or something. So at the end, it may be more meaningful for you this setup to be represented as light instead of a switch. With the Switches X integration, you can now convert that very easily. Switches X can be found under Configuration, Automation and Scripts Helpers. Both Groups and Switches X are located under the Helpers menu in Home Assistant. But there are more changes that are introduced there with Home Assistant 2022.4, namely the derivate Min max, threshold, times of day, and utility meter helpers. They all can be now managed from the Home Assistant UI. Moving ahead to the next new thing in Home Assistant 2022.4, which is a new update entity type. This update entity can be provided by any of the Home Assistant integrations and can tell you if there is a new update pending, not for Home Assistant, but for your integrated device. For example, if you have WLAD device added in Home Assistant and if there is a new WLAD update, this will be visible in Home Assistant. 
And not only that, you will be able to update your WLAD device right from the Home Assistant. Next Home Assistant 2022.4 feature is probably the most useful and exciting for me. Home Assistant Backup and Restore was only available for OS and supervised installation types, but not anymore. From now on, it will be possible to also backup Home Assistant Container and Home Assistant Core. You can even restore the backup on other Home Assistant installation types. This makes migrating from one installation to another a breeze. Most probably, it will also make more people to choose container and core installation types as their main. By the way, if you want to know more about the different Home Assistant installation types, I got you covered as I have a free webinar on this exact topic. It is available at automatelike.pro slash webinar. Go there, register and instantly start watching my detailed explanations about different Home Assistant installation types. After Home Assistant 2022.4, conditions can be tested in the automation editor. This was only possible for triggers until now. Next feature is Zone State. If you have defined a zone or zones in Home Assistant, you can now check their state. And the zone state will now show the number of persons that are in that zone at the moment. This can be very handy if you want to create automations that checks if anybody is home. From now on, you can just check the zone state and if it is zero, then you can arm the alarm, for example. The units of temperature and pressure sensors can be changed right from the Home Assistant UI if you have Home Assistant 2022.4 or higher. Here is a quick example where you can change a temperature sensor from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and it is very, very easy. The next new feature that I want to show you from the Home Assistant 2022.4 is the trigger variables. When you create an automation, you can now define variables in the trigger and use these variables in the action. Here is a quick example. I have created this demo automation. It cannot be edited in the visual editor yet, so I'll go to YAML mode, edit in YAML, and this is how the whole automation is looking like. I also created a button helper so when this button helper is pressed, I'm creating this variable that have this message as content, a button has pressed, and this exact message will be sent as persistent notification when the button is actually pressed. I'll just demo that for you. I'll go to my dashboard and I'll press this button. Immediately a notification is created and this notification have the text from this variable. To make this video even more useful and clear for you, I've created a smart home glossary, which contains the most common smart home words and abbreviations that I and everyone else is using these days. You can download that smart home glossary totally free of charge on my website, automatelike.pro slash glossary. I'm Kirill and I'm done speaking. Bye!